Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Hi, good morning. Happy Friday. It's October 22nd. Glad you're with us. We'll talk to Justin in just a second. You know, they've been talking now for a while about supply chain issues and that may affect our grocery shopping. We have a surefire hit gift that we know is going to be in stock right here in this San Antonio area. And it's got a local twist. It's all sorts of fun. Yeah, it's the Monopoly, but San Antonio edition. Yeah, so we talked about it in the last couple of months about an edition that was coming out, but yes. I think it was going to be our whole part of the state because we were talking about adding, adding New Braunfels or right. Green or Kerrville. Some, some landmarks that you would like to add. This is the San Antonio edition. It is complete with local retailers like HEB, Black Rifle Coffee, uh, Fleas Modern, and Twig Bookshop. Yeah, so this is pretty cool. And, you know, just a, a note, Alamo is the most expensive piece of real estate on the board at $400. Now, originally when we talked about this, mm -hmm. I think we guessed that the Alamo would be would be the, uh, the the prime real estate. Riverwalk, okay. second most expensive real estate on the board at $350. But there's a whole bunch of other historical locations on there too. Yeah, of course, like you have the Missions and uh, San Fernando Cathedral and the historic Market Square as well. Japanese Tea Garden, the Witty, the uh, San Antonio Museum of Art, Briscoe, Western Museum of Art, all, all on there as well as the Hemisphere, mm -hmm. uh, San Antonio Zoo, Confluence Park and the Spanish Governor's Palace. Yeah, and like Mark said, just in time for the holiday season. So Monopoly is available in 114 countries and San Antonio Monopoly is one of the first completely customized geographic game boards created for the North American market. A little secret, I have the Washington DC edition. Do you really? I do, oh. yeah, so here's, here's another one. So you're wondering, <laughs> okay. where, where can I get this? Well, you can get it at local retailers, HEB, mm -hmm. Black Rifle, Twig Bookshop, Feliz Modern, and we have a whole bunch of other ones here. Yeah, so this is, um, you know, and of course this article, just in case you want to refer back to it, it's on our website at kset.com. Davy Crockett's Cap, Gramercy Gift Gallery, Witty, Alamo Gift Shop, mm -hmm. Select CBS, CBS stores, stores, and Amazon, and there's a catch if you buy it at HEB. Yeah, uh, where is that catch? Portion of the sales. Oh yeah, San Antonio, San Antonio Food, Food Bank. Bank. <laughs> yeah, so that's good if you want to buy it from HEB as well. That's Runs really uh, about $39.99. All right, again, this is on our website at kset.com. And for now, let's look at today's 9 at 9. A 42-year-old woman is dead after actor Alec Baldwin accidentally shot her on a movie set in Santa Fe, New Mexico. A producer of the film called Russ says the prop gun with blanks misfired. Police say 42-year-old director of photography Hanya Hutchins and 48-year-old director Joel Souza were both shot in the incident. Hutchins is dead. The FBI confirmed skeletal remains found at a Florida nature reserve are those of Brian Laundrie. This was confirmed through dental records. A cause of death has not been determined. Laundrie was missing for over a month after his girlfriend Gabby Petito died during their road trip this summer. Her death was ruled a homicide by strangulation. A former plastic surgeon convicted in the 1985 murder of his wife has confessed after decades in prison. Robert Bierenbaum says he threw his wife's body out of an airplane in, quote, a fit of rage, in quote, because he was immature. A teacher with Poteet ISD is expected to see a magistrate judge later this morning. Joe Rodriguez is facing charges of indecency with a child and improper relations. The Atascosa County Sheriff says Rodriguez turned himself in after two warrants were issued. Texas is urging the Supreme Court to leave in place the law banning most abortions and is telling justices there's no reason to rush into the case. The state filed its response yesterday to the Biden administration's call on the high court to block the law. The court's intervention at this early stage before a federal appeals court has ruled would be unusual. The FDA is scheduled to vote next week on whether to recommend authorization for a vaccine for kids ages 5 to 11. If that happens, there is a meeting with the CDC's vaccine advisor set for November 2nd and 3rd. A thumbs up from them would send it to the CDC director to make a recommendation, which could happen as soon as the 3rd. Comal ISD is hoping voters will approve a multi-million dollar bond that would include building new schools and upgrading several infrastructure projects as the second fastest growing school district in the nation with a population of over 27,000 students. School officials say this bond package will target their concerns about growth and capacity. 
The future of Splashtown now depends on a new deal. Cavender Auto dealership hoping to expand and buy the land there. The water park's owner is retiring and council members already approved a zoning change. We're still waiting for comment from Splashtown's management. Tyson Foods announcing a $58 million expansion for its facility in Seguin. The corporation and the city of Seguin announced the investment that will help increase production capacity in order to meet demand by consumers. And that is today's Nine at Nine. All right, the weekend is almost here. Hang on, folks. We've just got to get through our Friday. It's not bad out there. Not too bad, but we have to admit there, we do notice the humidity. <laughs> well, sure. And we're going to notice it for a while. The, the relief as far as humidity is concerned doesn't come until next week. In the meantime, yeah, it's not too bad. We're in the 60s right now. There is some fog out there, too. Uh, some places getting visibility down close to zero. First, though, let's start with the temperature. 69 degrees at the airport, 67 Pleasanton, 60 in Kerrville. We did get down into the 50s there in the Hill Country a little bit earlier this morning. Forecast next couple days, 84 today, 85 Saturday, 88 on Sunday. So it's going to be awful warm. And there is an outside chance for shower or two over the weekend, but chances are really pretty low. Weekend looks great. Again, just a little bit on the warm side. And as uh, we look at uh, temperatures around the area, 60 comfort. We just showed you that, 62 Seguin. There's a look at the fog. Not much here in San Antonio, but as you get out towards Gonzales and Kennedy, that's where the fog picks up. Also noticing some around Rock Springs, down to about two and a half miles. In general, the, the visibility should start to improve here over the next hour or so, but there is still a dense fog advisory in effect until 10 a.m. for those areas down to the south and east of San Antonio. Pollen count is in, everything's low. That keeps the trend going this week. It's been a good week pollen wise and looking at the forecast up around 84 as we mentioned for a high today mostly sunny skies today light and variable winds and the relief that we were talking about does arrive with the front next week the question is will it bring rain we'll answer that question coming up here in just a few minutes guys Thank you, Justin. Taking a look at Transguide, uh, here's an accident happening in the westbound lane of Loop 410 at Cherry Ridge. We are told that the five vehicles involved in this crash right now, and of course that it seems to be, they seem to be pulled over to the side, so traffic is still flowing, but slow right there in Looks that area. Looks like we're waiting on a wrecker or two. We'll keep you updated. Top stories are following for you today. A driver's in police custody after refusing to stop for officers leading them on a chase. It happened around 1.30 this morning on the northeast side. So police saw the man driving with a truck with one tire missing and they tried to pull him over, but the driver refused to stop, eventually driving on the wrong side of the road on Harry Wersbach near Urban Crest Drive. The driver then crashed into a cinder block he is being checked out for injuries. It's not clear why he refused to stop for police. And it's been almost a month since a deadly stabbing on the west side, and police are asking for your help in finding the person responsible. They've released uh, surveillance pictures of a dark Chevy truck. The suspect was seen driving. Here it is. All happened back on September 25th at a picnic over on uh, Enrique Beretta Parkway just after 10 p.m. Police say a man in a dark Chevy walked up to 50-year-old Roy Salinas Jr., who was standing by the uh, ice machine, and stabbed him multiple times. A suspect then drove off west on West Commerce. If you have any information about this murder, call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. They may pay up to $5,000 for information that leads to an arrest. A reminder this week, KSAT explains focusing on research happening right now at Texas Biomed. The team speaks directly to some of the scientists about the incredible biomedical breakthroughs and how it could help us battle future viruses and diseases. You can watch the all-new episode right now on the KSAT TV app, available any way you stream. And happening this weekend, if you have medication around the house you need to get rid of, tomorrow is your chance to do so. Methodist Healthcare is hosting its annual opioid take back event, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. at three locations. Medications uh, will be accepted. Any over the counter or prescribed prescriptions of hydrocodone, oxycodone, or tramadol. More information about what you can drop off and another look at those locations. Head on over to ksat.com and click on this story. Also happening tomorrow, a community baby shower and resource fair for soon to be and new moms. It is being hosted by the birthplace at Texas, Texas Vista Medical Center. It will be from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. on the southwest side on Bar Light Boulevard. That's north of I-35 and it's free and open to the public. There will be door prizes and drawings for baby items that you might need. There will also be activities for the kiddos. 907 right now in your morning headlines, an update on those hostages held in Haiti and a fast thinking former U.S. Marine. 
plus a shootout over some exotic dogs and a mistake on a license plate in Ohio. David Sears is here with the details. Good morning. Morning. A vision and knowledge test coming up on this license plate for you. Got uh, it. OK. Hang in there. We'll be to that in just a second. But first, the leader of the gang in Haiti holding 17 missionaries hostages has threatened to kill all of them if he doesn't get what he wants, and that's money. According to several reports, that leader William Joseph said, quote, I swear that if I don't get what I want, I prefer to kill the Americans. I'll put a bullet in each of their heads. That revelation coming yesterday of those 17 hostages, 16 are American, one is Canadian. Smith wants a million dollars per person as ransom. The missionaries are with the Christian Aid Ministries. Five of those taken hostage are children. They were kidnapped last Saturday. Arizona gas station convenience store on robber coming in marine customer not happening today. No, sir. The other guy you saw him just run off when that happened. That's a former Marine who put up an end to that attempt. A juvenile was arrested on suspicion of armed robbery and aggregated assaults. Police are looking for the other two suspects. They did ask the former Marine about his quick reaction. He told him, hey, the Marine Corps taught him to not mess around. He didn't. Obviously, that video has gone viral. And now you're looking at a shootout outside a Florida home all over the price of some exotic dogs. The gun battle was between the woman and three men. She thought they came to her house to ask about some of the exotic dogs that she breeds. One of the men grabbed the woman's girlfriend and held her at gunpoint. And as soon as I turned around, he went and um, the other guy that was standing here went and put his go to put his arm around me, put the gun to my head. And then I started screaming, trying to like wiggle myself out. They were like trying to drag her out. I don't know for what reason they had her by her neck, trying to drag her out with the gun to her head. Yeah, the men grabbed a few of the dogs, micro bullies. They are worth about four grand each. As they started to drive away, they started shooting. She went in, grabbed her gun, and that's when all heck broke loose. Police finally got there. They said the woman was protecting her home, so no charges, but they said there were actually four men involved, the three that came to the door and a getaway driver. And a big oops on the new Ohio license plate. First change since 1913. We'll give you a second to see if you could figure it out. Orville and Wilbur Wright were actually born in Ohio. They went to Kitty Hawk, North Carolina to make their first flight. Do you see it? All right, check out the banner. Banner, birthplace of aviation. Okay. But look, it's at the wrong end of the plane because the plane is actually flying this way. Oh, gotcha. Oh. Yeah, it is backwards. Stabilizer bars right there. Yes, sir. And he's like lying on the wing right there. There, So it's, so they is it right there? Oh, that, that's the right one. This is the correct one now. Okay, so we, uh -huh. we just flipped it over to the correct one. So, you know, there were some very smart, <laughs> watchful people figured that all out. So they had to, they had to correct that, but they got it fixed. So, so there you Good. go. So they, I, got a, they got a license plate that's a collector's item now. Yeah, they do. Oops. Yeah. Whoops. That Oops. looks funny there with it, uh, the sub headline or from the news yeah. station. Not quite right. Not quite right. And they said, well, they weren't there. <laughs> you know, so how are they supposed to know? But I mean, when you look at it, though, this looks like the plane should be flying that way. Mm -hmm. But when uh, they first built it, these were the stabilizer bars right there. Uh, so it was flying this way. So got it. There you go. All right. Thank you, David. Your education for the weekend. Yes, sir. <laughs> Perfect you, for a Friday. Right yeah. now it is 910, about 67 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA at 9. If you like Ben and Jerry's ice cream, you may notice a price increase the next time you reach for it at the store. Details on how much it's going to go up. It was really by accident that a local woman ended up in the ICU COVID-19 unit at a local hospital. But ever since she was discharged, she keeps going back. Just ahead on GMSA at 9, the sweet reason and her why. A misdiagnosis led a woman to a COVID ICU unit. Sounds like a scene out of a movie, but the former patient, Pat Good, says she thinks it was all meant to be. The hospital trip opened her eyes to the trials ICU nurses face and inspired her to do something sweet. Alicia Bereta joins us live with more about how this woman's experience is encouraging nurses to keep showing up to work each day. Good morning. Good morning. Well, she ended up, ended up at Methodist Hospital Metropolitan. She was in shock, as you can imagine, but she asked a very important question to the staff that was helping her. That answer has led her to come back first once a month and now every Wednesday to deliver a very special and sweet sweet package. Alexa, play 1940s music. The music, it transports Pat Good to times of hope and unity. The cookie baking is a lot like women in the 40s and the, and the war because they always sent cookies to the, the sailors and soldiers. 
It's also the soundtrack to her favorite pastime, baking. All right, these are ready to go in the oven. I, I call myself God's little delivery girl. Every Wednesday, she bakes and delivers a fresh batch of pastries to keep her promise to the COVID-19 ICU staff at Methodist Hospital Metropolitan. I promised them that I would never forget them after I got out and um, that I would always keep them in my prayers. It all started back in April after she fainted and hit her head on a counter at home. Emergency first responders diagnosed her with a stroke in COVID-19 and transported her to Methodist Hospital Metropolitan. I woke up and these people came walking into my room in zoot suits. I just started laughing because I thought I was dreaming the whole thing. Tests showed she had an allergic reaction to a medication and had suffered a concussion, but she couldn't leave. And so um, I said, enough about me. Let's talk about you, girl, you nurses. I said, how long have you been doing this? And every single one of them said they had started from the beginning. And I said, how do you have the courage to come in here and do your job every day? And they said, because they need us. And we love nursing and we love our patients. Hi. Months later, Pat continues to and be moved by their cookies. perseverance. One nurse told me last year we were treated like heroes when the pandemic started. Now we're being treated like zeros because the community has forgotten. I pray, God, whoever receives this, these cookies, bless them today, ease their burden. Well, Miss uh, Miss Pat Good, she makes brownies, all kinds of cookies, but really the most popular have been her peach hand pies. Those went in less than an hour, and she even adds notes of inspiration. That way they can pin those up along their break room. And really, she hopes that this story also inspires the community to maybe do something similar. So if you are interested in baking goods for any staff, maybe your local emergency room, she asks that you call the front desk, ask about their COVID-19 protocols. Uh, but really, the standard thing right now is to have each of those baked goods individually wrapped. That way they can enjoy. And I asked her when she plans to stop baking. And she said until this gets under control, so she doesn't plan to stop anytime soon. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. Very cool story. Justin is here with uh, a forecast tailor made for the weekend. Yeah, if you're heading out to maybe some corn mazes, I think we have a couple around here, right? Yeah. Uh, it, the, the weather's going to be warm. It's, it's not great fall weather, I must say. But... Uh, if you point that out, it, it's it's not horrible. We're thinking temperatures in the 80s, both Saturday and Sunday. So we're going to give it the, the green light or the, the, the green corn in this case. Uh, just a 10% chance of a shower or two. Uh, amazing weather. Warm and humid on Sunday, too. Uh, Right now, we've got mostly clear skies here in San Antonio. 69 degrees, calm winds. Dew point is at 64, so the humidity is still very high. Invisibility is doing just fine here in Bear County. Not the case down to our south and east where we've had fog most of the morning. Gonzalez seeing some improvement though, and Kennedy actually has two. They were down close to zero just last hour. So three fourths of a quarter or three quarters of a mile, I should say, down there in Kennedy. And that is improvement. Hopefully it continues to get better. Rock Springs also still seeing a little bit of fog at two and a half mile visibility there. Dense fog advisory is in effect for another 40 minutes or so down to our south and east where that fog has been thickest. 67 in Hondo, 61 in Kerrville, 60 right now in Fredericksburg, already up to 70 in Austin and uh, 72 down there in Beeville. Radar and satellite shows that uh, we do have some high clouds coming in. We haven't had a whole lot of morning low cloudiness. It's basically just been that fog. So we'll see some of these thin high clouds uh, for areas south of San Antonio through the morning. And then as we look further north, there have been a few showers and storms up across parts of Oklahoma. In really next couple days, we're going to see any significant rain. It really is probably going to be well north of us. Can't rule out a shower or storm, as I mentioned, here over the weekend, but all in all, the, the rain chances are really low. If you're doing some traveling across the state, everything looks pretty good today. Partly cloudy skies. There could be a shower or storm down around Brownsville, but temperatures are warm statewide. Uh, even Dallas up around 85 today and partly cloudy. Here's what the future cast looks like. I mentioned some of those showers uh, down across the valley today. There's about a 20% chance down there, but I think it all stays south of San Antonio. Over the weekend, there's that one or two, those one or two showers showing up uh, Saturday. And Sunday, I, I think if we're going to see anything, it's probably going to be east of I-35, and it will be fairly light as the storm system passes by to the north. Monday is going to be a hot day. We're going to be challenging some records, I think, close to 90. 
And then uh, Tuesday into Wednesday is when we start to see our next storm system. We were hoping that this would bring some good rainfall. It's not looking that way anymore. All that moisture gets pulled east of us, and we're just on the tail end of things here. A brief window for some light showers and maybe a storm Tuesday night, Wednesday morning. And then clearing out Wednesday during the day, seeing some breezy conditions and it will dry out some. Now this isn't going to be one of those cold fronts that cools us down a whole lot. In fact, we'll get a westerly wind on Wednesday and that'll keep things pretty toasty. But by Thursday morning, it does cool down some. 84 degrees today, mostly sunny, light and variable winds. And the extended forecast will go 85 tomorrow, 88 Sunday, 90 on Monday, 89 Tuesday. There's that small chance of rain Tuesday night into Wednesday. And then clearing and breezy on Wednesday, 87. We start off Thursday though at 56. Sounds a little bit better than what we've been dealing with, guys. Sounds a lot better. A lot better. <laughs> Thank you, Justin. 921, about 69 degrees. Here's what's coming up. Coming up, we're taking you behind the scenes of the Broadway tour of The Lion King, currently playing at the Majestic Theater. And welcome back. It's 924. The North American tour of Broadway's The Lion King opened at the Majestic Theater this weekend. Tickets still on sale. KSAT producer Lexi Salazar got an exclusive behind the scenes look at the production here in San Antonio. to go backstage at the Majestic Theater where the Broadway tour of The Lion King is currently playing. We talked to the puppet supervisor and the actor who plays Zazu about how the puppets bring this iconic show to life. So in terms of just the, the, the basic mechanics of it, inside of my right hand, I have two triggers which help to move the bird's eyes. My right trigger finger, that's my pointer finger, that's how I move his mouth. In my left hand, I control the wings and the way that the body moves. The whole idea was pretty difficult because we took an animated film and we had to put it on stage. So uh, this idea that having puppets portray the animal side of these characters, of Mufasa for instance, and then also having that human side gives you that kind of uh, double event that uh, allows the audience in to the story without seeing somebody in a giant lion costume and thinking, oh well, you know, this is a Halloween costume. It's not that at all. Uh, it's really much more elevated. You know, a lot of these things are incredibly delicate. Uh, there's well over 300 pieces to Simba. Uh, all of the puppets you see here are from the start of our tour, uh, which is four years old now. And this pandemic has reminded us of how much we do need each other. And we have these opportunities to take care of and care for one another. I think this show is a great way of kind of enforcing that. Get your tickets now. The Lion King will be at the Majestic Theater until November 7th. <laughs> so it's a nice little run, November 7th. Yeah. I was looking at uh, tickets for the matinee show on Sunday, Sunday. and there were, there were some left, but they were kind of here and there and all over well, the theater. Well, maybe if you can find them somewhat close together, it'll right. be worth Yeah, I saw purchase. a couple that were like one row away from each other. Anyway, check it out uh, online. Uh, if you have not seen the Lion King production, it is amazing from the very beginning of the show to the end. Yeah, you were talking about that. Mm -hmm. I mean, we should arrange something so we can see it. Absolutely. 927, about 69 degrees. It's a lot more ahead on GMSA at 9. A town looks to crimp Chris Hemsworth for a tourism boom and a woman floats her dream home across an inlet. That's coming up in today's Take a Look at This. Plus, we continue to learn about the different elements of building a Day of the Dead ofrenda. Details on the significance of sugar skulls. Plus, we're getting a preview of tonight's big game coverage. David Sears will be joining us once again to break it all down. And Roadrunners, too, I guess. Yes. And welcome back. It's 931, and it's going to be busy in the sports world this weekend. From high school games to the Spurs, David Sears is here with everything you need to know. And Steph just asked David, where are you tonight? And he said... Everywhere. Everywhere. <laughs> We're all over the place. RJ is like, uh, I think he's on a bye week. So. It'll just be me tonight, and we're tonight we're going to Alamo Heights. We'll get to that in just a second, but you know some teams are starting to separate themselves from other teams in in districts. It's getting very interesting. There's still a lot of undefeated teams, 
and they're playing teams that are still trying to battle for a playoff spot. So tonight, week nine. Can you guys believe we're in week nine of high school football already? I can't. I can't. It went by fast. Yeah, yeah, it did go by fast. It's not over yet, though, because Judson and Smithson Valley are playing tonight. Smithson Valley undefeated Judson. Of course, they fired their head coach this last week. So it will uh, be interesting to see how that team responds to that. They are struggling at 1-3 and three in district, but Smithson Valley is 4-0, 7-0 in district. Then you got South Sand and Steele. Smithson Valley and Steele battling there at the top. Steele undefeated 4-0, 7-0 on the season. How about John Jay and Brennan? That'll be an interesting one. Brennan undefeated at 7-0. They're 5-0 in district, so there's another undefeated team. Bernie Champion and Alamo Heights. Bernie Champion is undefeated in district. They are 6-1. Alamo Heights undefeated in district. They are undefeated on the season. That's going to be a great one. That's where, uh, that's where we'll be tonight. That is one of the strangest districts in this entire region, if not in the entire state, because if you live in Bernie, you got to travel a long way to get to some of these schools. I think they have the longest trips of any school in this district. So we're going to be at, at Alamo Heights tonight, but we're going to be talking about some of these trips that these guys got to take. They got to leave yep. like, you know, they're probably on the bus now. Those boys have passports. They, yeah, they <laughs> might, just to, just to get around the state. Um, Rio Grande City and Southwest Legacy. Southwest Legacy coming off that big win last week over Southwest. They're at the Dragon Stadium. They were breathing fire on the Dragons. Rio Grande City struggling this year. Southwest Legacy 3-0 in district. And Reagan and Roosevelt. Reagan 5-0 in district. So you got a lot of undefeated teams. And like Roosevelt's like 3-3. Three three, so they still got a chance at, the, at moving up on the uh, playoff standing. So these teams are battling for that playoff position in week 9. So that'll be some fun highlights. Of course, there's uh, a lot of games. Check on our uh, BGC app to check out the games that are uh, live streamed tonight. And Larry Ramirez is out of town. And then Greg Simmons is going to have all the highlights for you tonight on the night beat. So a great night of high school football. And we know the weather's going to be perfect. So for high school football, no wind tonight. So we don't have to worry about the kicker, you know. That's true. Having to aim left and it goes right or aim right and it goes left. Or punter's no advantage. All right, so. Not only do we have high school football, but look what else we have. We have college football this weekend. And usually we end up doing UTSA last of the three. We're doing them first today Yay. because they are undefeated. They are right, you know, and now you can get on like, I think it's like one of the apps, like ESPN app. It'll, it'll break down the scores. You can find like the top 25. So now you just hit top 25 and there's UTSA right there, number 24. Which is all that? kinds of awesome. So they're yeah. taking on Louisiana Tech. Louisiana Tech is, have lost a few games. UTSA is 7-0 going to this game. It's on the road. Here's the thing. You work your tail end off to get to the top 24 and you got to work even harder to stay in the top 25. Yeah. So they got their work cut out for them this weekend. So we wish them the best of luck against Louisiana Tech. Texas, Steph, you don't have to worry about losing this weekend. Texas is off this weekend. <laughs> My week. So wow. You can wow. I can rest. You can rest. They need to relax and rest after they lost to Oklahoma in the last quarter and they lost to Oklahoma State the same way in the last quarter. Those Oklahoma teams took it to them so they can, they can relax this weekend. Everything's good. Good. And how about those Aggies this weekend? Yeah, that's what, two in a row? And they're playing South Carolina. Could that be three in a row for Texas A&M? Should be. Should be. Should be. They're playing South Carolina. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Night game. Night game. And where are they playing, Justin? Kyle Field. Oh, have they played an away game all year? They have. Relax. Like, who, who did they play away? Uh, who did they play away? Yeah, I see. Uh, we played Arkansas. Played Dallas. Colorado away. Didn't, didn't they play yeah, Colorado? We played away? Colorado yeah. away and almost lost that one. All right. So they're at home. So they're trying to move up the, the standings as well. See if they can get some of that respect back when they started it. Well, they were ranked six to start the season, right? They got a little work cut out for them, but they beat Alabama, and then last week they won. So, you know, three in a row is not, uh, not out of the question. All right, elsewhere tonight, Steph, we thought maybe you might want to go to Denver to help out the Spurs. Apparently, you and Rooney are the good luck charm for these oh, guys. Oh, I wish. We're, we're giving you all the credit, or we'll, you know, blame you, I guess, later <laughs> if something happens bad. But right now, you're getting the credit for, for a good start. Spurs want to know. Denver Nuggets want to know. And, you know, they got that guy named uh, Jokic on their team. He's got 27 the first game, 13 rebounds the first game. Of course, the Spurs got a bunch of young guys. Yeah, they looked so, good so on they Wednesday. they looked good the other night. They and, did. Uh, Devin Vassell off the bench, led yeah. the way with 19. So they got, the, they, got the, they got the work cut out for them tonight in Denver. And the bad thing about this is, well, I don't know if it's bad yet. We won't count bad. Um, they play tonight against Denver in Denver, and then they come home, and they have the defending world champion, why did they call them the world champion? They didn't play anybody else in the room. They just played in the NBA. World champion, 
uh, Milwaukee Bucks tomorrow night here Ooh. in the uh, AT&T Center. So they got a uh, interesting weekend going. Well, I don't remember. Do our banners say World Champs or NBA Champs? I, I don't. I have to go look. Well, I just know the banners hanging there. It just yes, says sir. Yeah. Huh. Yes, but five of them. Do they still call them? They used to call them World Champions, didn't they? I think they did back in the day. So, all right. They won. That's what we know. Maybe they ought to play some team from across the pond for a best of seven. See what they can do. Sounds mm -hmm. good. They do that in the Olympics and they come home with gold, so mm -hmm. no challenge. So anyway, so there's, there's, your, uh, there's, your, there's your sports weekend. So. Right. That's Keldon Johnson, how fun that gold medal is hauling around. Yeah. All, all sorts of fun. There you all go. Right. So. Thank you, David. All right. Okay. Go Spurs go. Go yes, Spurs go. go. Thank you very much, David Sears. And taking a look outside with live cam. Uh, humidity out there, but still not too bad as 70 degrees as temperatures start to creep up a little bit. Not bad at all. And with the Bucks visiting, by the way, Davis is, David's got to brush up on his Giannis Antetokounmpo. I thought it was Antetokounmpo. No. Antetokounmpo? <laughs> yes. We just you called him Giannis. It last year, David. He's yeah. a Greek freak is all yeah. we call him. And he's to down to earth because he went to get chicken nuggets after he won. That's right. I forgot about that. That mm -hmm. was cool. Yeah, that was super cool. Like uh, staying with the sports theme, football forecast tonight. If you're heading out to some of those Friday night football games, uh, looking good. As David mentioned, there's little wind to worry about. Temperatures will be a little bit on the warm side. 81 degrees at kickoff, 74 halftime. Sunset is at 656. Temperatures at this hour, 66 in Bolverde, 69 Gonzales, 71 Pleasanton, 69 in Uvalde. Fog is starting to lift. We haven't seen any here around San Antonio, but it is getting much, much better down around uh, Beeville and Kennedy. And even Victoria is starting to see some improvements. So the fog will go away here soon and we'll be left with mostly sunny skies for most of us. 84 degrees, the high temperature today, light and variable winds and temperatures uh, not so cool. Next couple of mornings, we'll see some more fog and cloud cover, some morning clouds, both Saturday and Sunday. We'll take a look, uh, another look at that weekend forecast and we'll look ahead to our storm system that's arriving next week coming up in just a few minutes, guys. And taking a look out at Trans Guy, we were talking about an accident there at westbound Loop 410 at Cherry Ridge. It looks like things are clearing up a little bit because we knew earlier there were about five vehicles involved. Well, we've got a couple of Text Hero trucks still out there. Not completely clear, but it looks like we also have a wrecker off the scene, so it should be clear very soon. You're right there, Steph. Federal Reserve now banning senior staff and policymakers from active trading and buying individual stocks. New restrictions come after controversy over trades made by senior Fed officials. Last month, heads of Federal Reserve banks in Boston and Dallas stepped down after criticism of their personal stock investments. New restrictions also promise the increase of timeliness of reporting and public disclosure by the Fed, Fed's board of members and regional managers. And the next time you splurge on the ice cream, Chunky Monkey, it's going to cost you a small chunk of extra change. The company that owns Ben & Jerry says it's increasing prices. Unilever owns the ice cream company and also Dove, and it says soaring supply change costs and potential for accelerated inflation are why it's boosting prices. It says they're going up 4.1%. Unilever is just the latest company to reveal price hikes. Nestle and Procter and Gamble made uh, similar announcements this week. Legos out with a recreation from the, of the house from Home Alone. With the holiday season right around the corner, the timing couldn't be better. Set features 3,900 pieces and uh, has detailed references to the movie, like the uh, aftershave lotion from the Scream bathroom scene and Buzz's pet tarantula. It's available for purchase starting November 1st. The retail price about $250. 940, about 70 degrees. Love the detail. You're watching GMSA at 9. Jamie Lynn Spears called out on social media after making a donation to the mental health organization. Details on why her money was rejected. Next. KSAT 12 presents another Day of the Dead story. Building the Ofrenda. Brought to you by Toyota. Building an Ofrenda is an important Day of the Dead tradition. These altars have many pieces and parts, and they each have a specific purpose. The colorful skulls found on many ofrendas are called sugar skulls. These days, they may not be made out of sugar, but in the beginning, they were. The art of molding granulated sugar and meringue was brought to Mexico by the missionaries. With sugar in abundance, it became a popular art supply in colonial times. So the first sugar skulls were not candy, they were decorative. So why a sugar skull? They symbolize many things, one being the sweetness of life. Originally placed on graves, the rain and wind would eventually wash them away. So they're also used to remind us of our mortality. To honor their loved one, people usually write the name of the departed on the sugar skull's forehead. 
It's a sweet thing to do. Welcome back. Just about 945. Jamie Lynn Spears, Brittany Spears' younger sister, will have to find another organization to donate to. That's because mental health organization This Is My Brave has declined an offer of proceeds from her forthcoming Things I Should Have Said. Supporters of Britney Spears say they don't believe Jamie Lynn has been supportive enough of her sister during her conservatorship. Back in July, Britney criticized her sister while describing how she has felt living under conservatorship. The organization announced the rejection on Instagram. Actress Ruby Rose says unsafe working conditions and a toxic culture on the CW series Batwoman led to her departure from the show last year. The Australian actress played superhero Kate Kane for one season. According to Rose, she was injured in a stunt and had her emergency surgery on two herniated discs. Rose said she had a broken neck and ribbon that producers threatened to recast her if she didn't go back to work right after surgery. Warner Brothers says it chose not to use Rose for a second season due to multiple complaints, multiple complaints about workplace behavior. And singer and sister of Beyonce, Solange Knowles, is making a rare book by black and brown authors more accessible to readers. Her creative studio recently launched a free community library. It features a curated collection of 50 books that U.S. readers can borrow for up to 45 days. So the collection spans fiction, nonfiction, poetry, drama, visual arts, and more. Readers are allowed to borrow one book at a time on a first come, first serve basis. The books will be shipped with the cost of shipping and returns included. In a tiny town in Australia is pleading for a Marvel superhero's help to drive tourism way up down under. Jeremy Roth has today's Take a Look at This. Officials in a small Australian town pulled out all the stops to give its local tourism a boost of star power. Why would Chris Hemsworth want to come to Cowra? The town council of Cowra launched a campaign called hashtag get Chris to Cowra along with a video starring some local residents to entice marvel celeb Chris Hemsworth to come for a visit. We love you Chris! Yeah Chris, we love you too. Come on Chris, come to Cowra! The cheeky video brainstorms many tactics, like a proposed Hemsworth statue. What if he doesn't come? I no, will still build it. We'll just make him bald and fat. Jokes on them, Hemsworth can still pull off that look. To the town's delight, the humorous ad worked. Hemsworth, who actually signed on as Australia's tourism ambassador in 2016, took to Instagram and promised to visit Cowra next year. In a bid to save her dream home, a Canada woman got creative, relocating the house across an inlet. Hey, whatever floats your boat, er, house, I guess. When Danielle Penny found out the building's previous owners planned to demolish it, she offered to move it instead, employing the help of multiple boats to push it across the Bay of Islands. Prior to the move, the house was stripped and drainage holes were drilled, and then it was anchors away. Penny says the house will have to dry out first, and then renovations can begin. For Take a Look at This, I'm Jeremy Roth. And one has to assume that was the cheapest option? I don't know. It looks kind of crazy, though. I, it almost looked like it was going to just flip yes. over and sink. Well, good luck. Good luck with yeah, that. Definitely. Well, the skeleton crew is back, and this one's yeah. a good one, Oh, Justin. yeah, I love this one. Yeah, we showed this a little bit earlier this morning, but I think it's worth re-showing. We, we get these in every day, by the way. If, if you haven't seen this before, uh, the skeleton crew, this is in a neighborhood, and they reposition the skeletons every day to something very creative, and this is the one today. It's a, it's, it's a spa. It says, have you tried the calcium and olive oil bone rejuvenation treatment? It's, how do we say this? Skeltastic, skeltastic. There we go. We also recommend the no the no tissue massage to ease your aching bones. Hilarious. Skywatcher <laughs> sent these in. This is his neighbor, and they do such a great job with it. It's incredible. Yesterday was the YMCA, but this this is involved. This this sticks work. Great job. We appreciate it. We'll see what they uh, submit next few days as we get closer to Halloween. If you're heading out to Lost Maples next couple days, or you have some plans to head out there in the future, here's. Uh, the latest report this came in on on October 20th seeing lots of yellow out there but the trees really haven't started to change just yet colors begin to show around Halloween according to Texas Parks and Wildlife the peak color typically first two weeks of November but you have to book online through Texas Parks and Wildlife before your visit you got you got to book a day pass and it sells out pretty quickly so just a heads up if you have plans to go out there that's where it stands right now and if you missed this we have 
uh, posted that to our Kisset weather app as well if you want to log on and get the latest information. Outside, we've got mostly clear skies, 69 degrees at the airport, 72 Stenson, 69 Kelly, 67 at Randolph. Really light winds out there and visibility just continues to improve. In fact, look at that. We have uh, gotten rid of the fog minus Victoria, which is down to half a mile, but everyone else fog has gone away. It is lifted and we're starting to see a lot of sun in spots boosting those temperatures. 63 Kerrville, 73 in Uvalde, 72 in Pleasanton, 71 in Gonzales, a place that did see quite a bit of fog this morning. Two points. They're still high. They stay high over the weekend, but then we get into next week and boom, we fall off a ledge. That's going to be Tuesday into Wednesday with our next front. That's going to be our relief because I don't think we're going to get much rain out of this and it's not going to be a big cool down. So the relief is going to come in the form of lower humidity. Uh, satellite and radar does show that uh, we have some clouds uh, down to our uh, down to our south and west, but not much. Oh, what we got going on there. OK, something's changing. Uh, on me, uh, I think someone else is using the computer. Uh, Futurecast shows that uh, we are going to see some clouds and a few showers down to the south there around uh, San Antonio. And then as we get into Saturday and Sunday, a couple of isolated showers and storms may show up uh, here. But I, I think the chances of seeing any rain are really pretty low. And then as we get into uh, next week, uh, it's going to be warm on Monday, and then we'll get our next storm system, as I mentioned, Tuesday into Wednesday, and that's when we have a very small chance of rain. The window is small, but then the winds will pick up and it'll dry out behind that on Wednesday. Forecast for the rest of today, we're up around 84, mostly sunny skies, and the extended forecast, 85 Saturday, 88 Sunday, 90 on Monday, and there's that slight chance of a shower to Tuesday night into Wednesday. We will get some temperatures back down into the 50s for morning lows, by Thursday, guys. Or you had a ghost in the machine. Something's happening, but you know, it's it's Friday, so you just yeah. prepare for anything. And Thank it's you. the month of Halloween, so. That's true, too. Who knows? 951, <laughs> about 71 degrees. And coming up, Whitney Houston making an appearance in Las Vegas this month. Yes, you heard that right. After the break, details on this upcoming performance. And if you're ready for an upgrade to your in-home theater, you are in luck. Tomorrow on GMSA, some tips to set up the perfect viewing experience for your home. And one last look at the forecast. We'll see those temperatures in the mid 80s again today. Some clouds, maybe a little bit of fog during the morning over the weekend. And then it gets warm before we get our next storm system in here that cools us down just a little bit by late next week. You guys remember the holograms we've seen before, uh, Elvis? Yes. Uh, Michael Jackson, if yep. I remember, they've had a couple of different variations. And at Disney, there's a, I think there's a display with mm -hmm. several of those going on. Sounds right. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. There's another one coming out, and uh, it's a Whitney Houston hologram, uh, going to be appearing in concert uh, to debut in Las Vegas. Yeah, so this hologram concert says to make its North American debut on the Las Vegas Strip. This is this coming Tuesday. The show is called An Evening with Whitney and includes not only the voice of the late Whitney Houston, but a live band with singers and dancers. There will also apparently be never before released vocal tracks from the singer. Evening with Whitney starts the extended residency at Harris. Las Vegas. Yeah, very, very cool. Technology is amazing. It is. Isn't it? You guys have a great weekend.